Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you're all doing well. Today I have a magical DIY for you. You all seem to love them which is great news because I love them too. This time I'm going to be taking a £2 insect house and we're going to completely transform it. This is from Poundland so it's a budget decor which is a bonus. If you enjoy these videos make sure you subscribe and leave me a thumbs up. Let's get into the video. So I'm going to start by removing all of these, the bamboo sticks that are inside. And now for these bits you're going to need some pliers and what you want to do is just wedge it in the corner and then with a little bit of force you just push on it and it will come out. So I've done this one already and now I'm just going to do this one. Next I'm just going to give it a coat of paint and I'm using this Wilco tester pot. I don't want it to be plain white so that's why I'm going with this colour here. And because this colour is so bright, you might need a few coats. Okay, this is nice and dry now. And I'm going to start working on the roof. To do this, I'm just going to go as natural as possible in this project because that really matches the whimsical fairy kind of creations. So I've got some moss here and I've just collected this from my garden. I store it in this big pot and I just keep this in the bathroom and water it and maintain it. So I'm going to start with that, just taking my hot glue and I'm going to stick the moss directly on the roof. And you're going to make sure to add glue and moss on these sides as well and if you got it from the garden or the park like me just separate the soil from it So now I'm just breaking up pieces of bark and this was from the park so just like this and then I'm going to attach them to the top of the roof on top of the moss using my hot glue. Next we're going to cover these sides here again using some bark so I've just cut it kind of like just breaking it really to size. And then again, we're just going to add some hot glue to stick that on. So this one lengthwise is good, but it's obviously too big. So I'm just cutting it. And I think that will do. Just the bottom. Again, just sticking that down. Once you've finished the front, turn it to the side and then we're going to start working here. Again, just filling it with some bark. So just hot glue it in place and if you've got little gaps like that, you can break them to fit it or you can just add some moss. This is kind of like doing a jigsaw, you're fitting all the pieces together. Okay, so you can see I've done that as much as I could. Now I've got some little empty gaps, so I'm just going to take some moss to fill those in. I'm starting on the other side now, and it kind of helps if you've got bigger pieces like this. It's just easy to stick down and you don't have to, you know, play around with so many little pieces. So 
the last side is done. Again, just taking my mask and filling those holes in. Okay, now we're going to start working on this side here. So you can use cardboard, I usually do and wood, but I'm kind of just trying to go with something a little bit more high end just so that it can match the whole creation. So I've got this balsa wood, it's really thin and that's why I love using it for projects because I can cut it and just, you know, kind of get it to fit into my projects a little bit more easier without having to use machinery. So what I'm going to do is try to basically cut these to size and stick them so that I can cover this area but I'm also going to be cutting little windows and a door so hopefully it all works out. I'm just taking my pencil and kind of just doing a rough drawer out of where I need to cut. So I've done that and now I'm just going to stick the two together just taking my hot glue adding a few dots down the side. Now just taking my scissors, see why I love this wood? <laughs> I can just literally cut it. So I've almost got it to fit but now I'm just going to draw how big I want my door and where I want it so that I know how much to cut. Now doing the same for the window, so I've done one there going to draw the next. So now I'm ready to start cutting those out as well. I use the smaller scissors for the intricate areas like around the corners because this can just split so you have to be really careful with it. craft table is not a mess right now but I think I'm just going to add a little chimney I thought that would be super cute and I'm just using one of the bamboos that came inside the insect box to do this just take your hot glue and add it on to the side you can cut it if you want but I think that that's a decent size I'm just going to add a little brown to it because I feel like it looks kind of like too new almost and I'm just doing that with a little bit of um, some Arteza water paints or watercolour paints. That's perfect now, that's the right colour. I'm going to take some of this toy stuffing pan and also do this, and this is just going to mimic some steam coming out of the chimney. So we're just going to hot glue that in. So next I went on to the internet and I've got a lovely fairy background here and this is just printed onto some paper and you do want it on paper because card will be too heavy to work with. So I'm going to cut this to size and I'm also going to be using some Mod Podge to stick it down and then I'm going to go over it with the glass Mod Podge just so that it, so that it can bring out the colours. I just find that that really gives it a nice finish. So we're going to start by adding some Mod Podge to the inside of the walls, everywhere including the backing and the bottom. And now I'm going to stuff the image in and just see how much it covers from the roof to the sides, the back and the bottom. I'm not too worried about this little area here that's not covered because when it's upright like this you're not going to be able to see it and as you can see that just looks so beautiful. I'm going to go over it now with some Mud Podge. I'm just going to add some glitter in while it's wet. Okay, I've gone back to working on the front now so as you can see this just <laughs> looks a mess right now but don't worry this is just a template that's why I was saying you can use cardboard so let me just bring back the door so I'm going to glue the door at an angle so that it looks like it's kind of opening a little 
as you can see I've got more bark here what you want to do is just take some bits off like we did before and then again kind of like jigsaw puzzle it adding little bits with hot glue until you completely cover it I'm going to go in with my watercolour Arteza paints again this is because I want to make it the same colour as the bark in case when I do stick down the bark that there's some spots that you might be able to see or anything now I'm going to start adding in the bark just gluing them again with my hot glue just adding some dried plants that I actually got from last year so I'm just sticking them with hot glue on the sides of my house just to add some colour I'm taking this little bead to add as the doorknob for the door and I'm just going to colour that in with bronze this is the sharpie pens take your hot glue and you're going to stick it onto the door cute is that <laughs> now we're going to take the front of the house turn it around and then add hot glue at the base so that we can stick it on to the house as you can see this already has a backing on originally with the insect house so you don't need to stick anything on there and you can just hang this on your wall so just in case you forgot this was the before so I'll let you have a look at how the house looks now and I'll show you an optional step just to make it even more magical the steam isn't showing, there you go I added a few dried flowers here just to finish up and that's how the sides look and then inside it kind of looks like a face doesn't it? <laughs> And then if you like you can add some tea lights in there or fairy lights whatever you like you can just slip this through the door looks a bit haunted now <laughs> wait until the blue color passes so this is during the day i'll show you what it looks during the night as well and i've also got this fairy figurine just showing you a few options here you can place her inside so that it looks something like this I like that you can just see the fairy a little bit and it's not too like prominent and here it is with the room light off just so you can see the magic and the colour come through Now I've got a colour changing LED so the green and the blue and the red kind of look like it's haunted house <laughs> but you can just go with a normal tea light colour I think that will probably work better so just put in one of the other tea lights this is a flickering one so that's a bit annoying I don't seem to have just a normal one but you can see here it looks a little bit better than the blue and the red and the green Leo's here as well <laughs> So that's it for today's project let me know what you think i'm just so happy with how this has came out it's amazing what you could do with poundland items and this was just an insect house at the end of the day and look at it now thank you so much for watching i hope you leave feeling inspired and i'll see you in the next video bye